previously on the head of a pen. Extra dimensions that are large is crucial to producing black holes at the LHC. Any tiny black hole like that would uh, decay very rapidly. Suppose you had a quantum fluctuation that occurs close to the horizon, close to the edge of a black hole. The, so that space itself uh, changes into a, a, a positron and an electron. It's possible for the positron to go down into the black hole and the electron to escape. That's called the evaporation of a black hole. All right? And the smaller the black hole, the easier it is for that process to occur. It's thought that at the birth of the universe there were all kinds of different sizes of black holes. <laughs> and the smaller ones evaporated away. What they were worried about at Santa Barbara and so forth is the idea that a, a black hole could be created and then just wander off <laughs> somewhere else. Now, if a black hole is stable, and it encounters other matter, either other particles from the beam, which seem pretty unlikely, or more likely uh, particles in the detector itself, or if the thing goes off into the earth, you know, matter inside the earth, it could eat that matter and accumulate it and grow in size rather than uh, decay, evaporate away. Well, that would be a bad thing if, <laughs> if such a black hole uh, we're slowed down enough to, let's say, go into orbit inside the Earth. That's an odd concept, right? But it, that's exactly what would happen. A black hole uh, experiences gravitation just the way uh, every other object does. And depending on how, what its velocity was when it was created in one of these LHC experiments, it could just sit there and orbit the Earth, gradually lose energy, eat more and more particles, and then uh, eventually eat the Earth out from the inside, and uh, obviously that, that could have <laughs> dire consequences for, for everything on our planet. Black hole, for the purpose of the uh, LHC or the LHC concern, uh, is uh, a particle that whose gravity is so strong that even light cannot escape from it, and therefore it looks black because light cannot be emitted from it and come to our eyes. So it's Now, this was the classical picture of a black hole until Hawking came around in 1974 and he pointed out that a black hole actually can, because of quantum mechanics, emit some light through the process that's called Hawking evaporation. So a black hole is not completely black it can emit some light uh, due to this quantum mechanical process. Now, at the LHC, in certain theories, in theories with large extra dimensions that I, uh, I alluded to before, uh, can be produced uh, and can be produced at a significant rate. Uh, this is not an exotic physics, it, it's, it's based on pretty good uh, general relativity. <coughs> now, if you make a black hole that's, you know, really just one, you know, one constituent of a proton and another constituent of a proton, that's an incredibly tiny black hole, all right? And this evaporation rate is going to be phenomenal. The classic theory of Hawking uh, predicts that even though they are produced, they live for such a short amount of time that they instantly evaporate before they have any time to do anything significant. In fact, they don't even have time to move from one atom to the next. That's how they decay far more rapidly, uh, far too rapidly to really be able to move any significant distance. So. According to the standard theory that most people agree with, a black hole lives for such a small amount of time that it can't do anything. 
Now, uh, so the so-called, that's the very first grounds on which I have no concerns about LHC.